Welcome to the Beige Nomads Caravan Group, where Malcolm and I are sharing our caravan experiences on Facebook and YouTube. Please come on board and feel free to add your experiences so that we can all share and enjoy. Well, we're in Bar Colden and this is the Tree of Knowledge. Yeah, we're in the late 18th century, I think it was. Um, shearers gathered to form the Australian Labor Party. Unfortunately, some opposition person poisoned the original tree, she died, so this is a monument to the stump. How's this inside? Massive wind chime. Not too much wind around the moment, but yeah, it's great. We're only passing through Bar Cold on this day. The three main places to stay are the showgrounds, the Homestead Caravan Park, as well as the Bar Cold and Tourist Park. All of them are quite clean and quite spacious. Well, we pulled into Jericho yesterday afternoon and we decided to stay at the showgrounds out here, the, about a kilometre out of town. Not a bad sort of a place, uh, but the winds come up over again overnight and it's a westerly wind that's bloody cold. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's not a bad sort of a spot. You have a look around there, you know, there's plenty of room, there's some concrete slabs. And uh, there is power on most sites, but some of the sites you have difficulty, you have difficulty getting uh, access to water, but it is available here as well. But uh, plenty of room to move, open fires, that sort of thing, which I wish the hell I had at the moment because I'm bloody cold. Sadly, the township of Jericho really hasn't survived. Just about everything's closed except for, I think, the pub. One of the things I liked about uh, driving through Jericho many, many years ago was the relaxation of my hair. My relaxation of um, the, the little township. It's only a small township, don't know how many people. But uh, I thought I'd bring Sue along here for a bit of a uh, show. <laughs> the old arm around, it's what you do in the movie theatre, because what we're sitting in here is actually the local drive-in theatre. Have a look at this. It's open air, room for about 20 cars, but if you can't fit your car in, you come and sit in these bunks. How country is that? This is the original projector for the drive-in theatre, and this uh, theatre was opened in 1969. Real red hot hit with a lot of the locals when it was launched. I don't know if it still operates, but uh, still looks in pretty good nick. They've done it up a little bit since I was last here. Pulled in here overnight at the Emerald Cabin at Caravan Village. It's quite a large caravan park, green and lush, and plenty of room. Yeah, we were given a side just out the back here of the uh, caravan park here. Not a bad spot, plenty of room to move. Downside is, he's right beside the council yards, which you have trucks going in and out, tractors and so forth. But that's, uh, I guess, when you're not sleeping. Yeah, travelling out in the country sometimes really is a step back in time. Uh, a lot of childhood memories come back with some of the things you see that we used to use in the big cities years ago, but one thing that really brings back memories is this thing here. It's a mulberry tree. I haven't seen one of these for years. And we used to, as kids, uh, do silkworms, but uh, we'd get our faces filthy with mulberries. And here's one right in the middle of Emerald. It's just starting to bear fruit. There's a couple there just sitting in the, on the ground here, but there she is, a mulberry. And they were delicious. We, we couldn't get enough of them when we were kids. Mm 
yeah, plenty of sights, a lot of room. Um, but she's right beside the golf course too, for those enthusiasts who like play golf. Not far to go. There's the golf course right there. As you can hear, the bloody westerly winds are still around. God, it's cold. But anyway, we'll get over it. Township of Banana has nothing to do with the fruit. A favourite of local stockmen in the 1860s, Banana the Bullock was so called named after his yellowish colouring and helped herd cattle into the holding yards. Have a go at this. Um, we've wandered through here to a place called Banana, which I always want to come back and have a look around. And apparently, there's this new pub that's built in town and they've got it advertised on. Uh, country pub camping, uh, but they offer you a vacant block of land which looks like this. It is just so uneven, and there's, the place is just loaded with trip hazards and so forth. There's probably snakes coming from over the back here. And this is the path up to the pub. Now, if we come back here overnight, there's all these pipes here we can trip over. Could be snakes in the grass. It's underneath the new tower. And yet they insist that we pay them ten dollars for us to come and have a few drinks at their pub, have dinner, and I was actually going to buy a box of beer because I did about run out of beer. But ten bucks for this, I doubt, very much doubt, whether he would be covered by public liability on shithole land like this. Wouldn't mind paying for, nothing, paying for something with amenities. There's no toilets, no showers. Just the right to pull up your caravan here. And even on the ground here, it looks like there's smashed bits of PVC pipe. You're walking through here, you could trip over them, you cut your bloody feet on them. But it's hardly even been cleaned up. There's just shit everywhere. It's like a dump. Well, looky here, here's another trip hazard. Could break my bloody ankle on that one too. Yet in front of the pub, you've got an area like this, which would be acceptable for paying $10 a night. Because you're close to the pub, you don't have to walk through the park in the paddock in darkness and injure yourself. At least you have lights from the hotel here. And it's fairly well maintained, whereas the other part certainly isn't. So we decided to pull the pin from down at that pub. And we're pulling this just up from town here. Just this memorial hall with a bit of a car park. And quite frankly, the money I was going to pay to have dinner at that pub and buy a slab of beer, I'm going to donate it to this bike here, charity for brain cancer. Because I'd rather spend my money there than waste my time in that freaking pub. Well, it's the following morning now, and I've had a bit of a rant yesterday, but uh, look, we like to try and support local businesses, particularly the pubs, you know, we're out here in the regional areas, we're doing it a little bit tough go there and eat a meal, buy some beer and that sort of thing. And uh, But to be confronted with a, a charge of 20 bucks for, for bugger all. But anyway, I've had my say. Uh, now it's time to move forward and move on to the next destination. Now when you're caravanning, obviously what you need to do is put the stabiliser legs down in your caravan. And the conventional way is to use one of these suckers crank handle. But my back's uh, really getting to me lately, so I've, I've buckled. I've actually gone and brought out one of these fellas. Little Ryobi drill, and it makes it a lot easier to lower the stabilizers. How easy was that? However, we get some caravanners who actually use a rattle gun 
but all you hear in the early morning when they go to take off is this constant bloody rattling of a gun. If you're going to use something, use something lightweight drill like this. It's nice and quiet. There is another alternative to using the, the drill or a rattle gun. It's probably a little bit more expensive. Uh, can be a little bit temperamental and uh, yeah, sometimes can be really cranky. And that is you get your wife to do it. Isn't that funny though? Uh oh. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to tell your friends, share the video, don't forget to subscribe, which doesn't cost you any money, as well as uh, look us up on Facebook and put in your contributions. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.